I have to say that um, I've known Gary for quite a long time now, and uh, I enjoy watching him grow and mature, and he gets better with age and a lot with I'm just proud of him. So, uh, and he came back tonight because we, uh, Carson um, has a family situation going through his uh, grandmother is real sick, she's having surgery, and um, the family was sick, so we called in Aaron, he flew in on his cape and his guitar. And uh, so, y'all be sure to thank him, and then also in a way of thanks, uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, the more he sang as white as snow, as white as snow, I kept thinking these walls will never be white as snow. They changed colors over the weekend, and we have the uh, Thomas family, the Johnson family, and uh, Tiffany Lowe to thank for that. So, uh, oh, can you take this one? Please, sir. Um, anyway, uh, Kelsey is actually the one responsible for uh, doing the, uh, the logos on the blackboard chalk wall. And so uh, be sure you go uh, pat her on the forehead and tell her, good job, uh, before you leave tonight. That'd be great to do that. So open up your Bible, Psalm 31, verse 3. Thank you. Uh, for those of you that are new, we kind of get excited about God's Word, and so that's kind of like the key word. Trent goes, that deserves a courtesy clap, and everybody does it at the same time. We say, let's open up God's Word. And if you have your Bibles, that's a great time to clap, uh, unless you're flipping pages already. But Psalm 31, great. We're going to read it, um, and then we're going to talk about it uh, quite a bit tonight. Hopefully, uh, we can get a lot done in a short amount of time. Um, but it says this, Psalm 31, verse 3, it says, You are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Okay? Um, one of the things that, that I've grown up with uh, for a long time is uh, I watch a lot of movies, probably way more than I should. Um, and it used to be that I had like the Blockbuster card. Anybody know what Blockbuster is? Okay. Um, and so now it's Netflix. Um, Blockbuster went the way of the dinosaur. Uh, even in Seagville, there's no Blockbuster anymore. Um, Seagville still has a lot of things they shouldn't. Um, just saying. Uh, truck stops. So, but here's the thing, I watch a lot of movies, and so I get a real kick out of certain things. I see movies and I start crying. There's certain movies that I look at and I'm going, man, that'd be great to use on Wednesday night. And I'm like, how am I going to get that from VHS to the computer? And it freaks me out. And so I have to wait like a week and a half to get it on Netflix and so I can put it in and, and pull it out. But there are certain things that I listen to as well. I listen to a lot of movie soundtracks. Okay? Um, Aaron? James Horner, uh, John Williams, Trevor Jones, uh, guys like that uh, that have created these soundtracks for these movies that when you listen to the music, you're going, oh my God, I'm so inspired. You're like, um, Lord of the Rings has some of the best set. Great Park has the best ever. The best ever. Right behind, like, James Horner and Titanic was pretty good. I can listen to Titanic for a while. I actually found a video on YouTube that is 10 hours worth of the music about the Shire at the Lord of the Rings. And you can listen to The Little Hobbits for 10 hours. And I was like, and so I'm downloading it right now uh, on the YouTube. Uh, but sometimes if you watch a scary movie, the music will get you before the video does. Because it's like the dumb. And then it gets quiet, and all of a sudden somebody jumps out of somewhere, and they're all like creepy looking and stuff. And then you scream, and then everybody else screams around you, especially when you're in a movie theater. If you're at home, you're like, mm, whatever, that looks scary. But movies have had a big impact on me. Braveheart is, is one of them. Uh, the Patriot is another. Band of Brothers is. You gotta wait until, some of you gotta wait until you're old enough to watch that. Uh, Braveheart included. Um, but it's some amazing movies with some amazing soundtracks. And so I got to thinking about some of those movies that really, really inspired me, okay? And so I picked out this clip from Armageddon. Armageddon is a movie with Bruce Willis, okay? <laughs> Bruce Willis, one of the great movie actors ever. Uh, he has no talent, but he's left-handed. Yeah. Left-handed people in here? Yeah. By the way, I hurt my shoulder this summer. I decided I'm going to start going left-handed. And so I'm really just starting to master the art of throwing left-handed to my son, who's six years old, and can catch most of the time. So anyway, Braveheart, 
Armageddon is one of those great, great movies, and it's about saving the earth. Because there's this big, big, massive rock that's coming towards the earth. And after I watched the clip, I was like, oh, that fits. That's so awesome. Because the rock's coming, it's, gonna, it's not the rock, like, you know, Dwayne Johnson. It's like a huge rock flying in outer space. It's coming to the earth, and it's going to blow up the earth, and rock's going to die. It's awesome. So anyway, I want to show you this video, because sometimes there's movies that inspire you. Or about the Dallas Cowboys and how much time we need to speak 
He's been in praying for both of those teams. But in the end, he says, as a matter of first importance, first importance, this is what I want to declare every day. This is the thing that I want to breathe every moment of my life. This is the thing that when I die, I want people to say, this is what was on his lips when he was old and when he was young and he was middle-aged. I want these things to be the things that people remember about me. That's what Paul said. And this is what David is saying, that God is the matter of first importance. There's nothing else more important. Because he is all, and he is the end of all things. He's God. Whether you believe him or not, many people say, God spoke and bang, there was, and yay, all that. And then, but, guys, he's there whether or not you believe him or not. He loves you whether or not you accept that or not. He died for you whether or not you trust that or not. He does things without you even knowing it to continue life and existence in this great big world that we live in. Trees continue to grow because he gives them the, the care they need in order to grow. There are things that God is actively doing right now that we'll never give him credit for because we don't see him doing it all the time because he's in control of all things. And he's worthy of everything that we can give back to him and even more. And so David's saying, this is what God is about for you are my rock. He's declaring, and this is what God's all about. And I think there's a message that some of you, especially those of you that are just coming up from RAs and GAs, and you've been hearing about stories from the Bible and missionaries for the last few years, guys, these are the things where you start to really apply those things when you start walking back into your middle school tomorrow, and when you walk back into your families tonight, is that you need to talk about the matter of first importance with your mom, your dad, your auntie, your cousins, your next family reunion. And maybe there's a conversation you need to have about all the things that you've learned over the last five or six years in RAs and GAs. Maybe a cousin, maybe a teacher. But to tell them those things that you've seen and you've heard and you've touched and you've smelt about Jesus. First John, chapter 1, verse 4 says that those things that we've seen and heard and touched and felt about Jesus, these things we declare. Why? Because they're a matter of first importance. Second thing that he's trying to say is that God is his fortress. And I give you four S's about this whole fortress thing. One, it's his security. Sometimes in this life, you don't feel secure because you're not sure what's going to go on. You don't feel secure in certain situations, around certain people, around different things or whatever the case may be. You don't feel secure. There's only one way to feel secure in any situation, and that's to understand the love of Christ dealt out for you on the cross. as payment for our sins. That God sees you as he chooses to see you, not as you think other people see you. There's always security in that because God will always love you. You can never do anything that will cause God to love you any less. And there's nothing that you can do that will cause God to love you any more. But those of you athletes that are already thinking, man, I'm going to get this highlight video and I'm going to send it to this school and this school and this school. There's no highlight video that you're going to send to God and go, God, please be impressed with me because I'm not getting uh, through to my parents or I'm not through to my coaches and and nobody really cares about me except for you, God. And he's not going to ask for your highlight video. He's not going to ask you how many times you were RAs and GAs and mission friends, and how many times you came to church, and how much you gave to the offering. He says, I love you unconditionally, and I'm never going to love you any less, and never going to love you anymore. There's security in that. And for David, there was security in knowing who God was because God had called him to be king over Israel. There was security in that because he knew that God, what God had promised, what he was going to bring it to. Second thing is there is salvation in Jesus. In no other name, Acts chapter 4 says, in no other name under heaven is there by which man might be saved in the name of Jesus. It's only through Jesus. It's not Buddha. Okay? Buddha's only good when you go to the Chinese restaurant. Okay? Just somebody who puts your drink on and you hand for your dinner and you can walk out. Okay? You rub his little head, you grab the little fortune cookies, you walk out. Okay? Bless his heart, Joseph Smith probably was a nice guy. He probably needed AT&T. But guys, he's dead. Jesus is alive. Just saying. Okay? Harry Krishna needs to watch the show what not to wear. Okay? Bless his heart. Jesus died, rose again on the third day. Nobody else did that for you. Okay? 
Okay? There's no other name under heaven by which man might be saved in the name of Jesus. It is the only way to salvation. A promise of a home in heaven. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. The truth, the life, and the way. Not working your way there. You cannot work your way there. You cannot repay God for what he's already done. There's salvation in that. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Romans chapter 10. So it's not about what we can do. It's what Christ has done. There's also security in that. Fourth, or third thing about this, uh, a fortress. When you go to a fortress, here's the thing. When you've been out in, in a kingdom, and again, we're, we're visually going, hey, we're in a democracy, and we live in America, and uh, we don't go out to war that often, except for a um, long ways away, and then, then there are just skirmishes or police actions, and it's not really a war, but in those days, when kings would go out to war, it was a major ordeal. The entire group of men would go out. It's like World War II. And so we lost a whole generation of men that went to World War II. And that's how things would go. Is it, a whole generation of men would declare war upon a country, and they would go and they would battle it out, and they would lose lives for their country. But those who came back, they would come back to the fortress or to the kingdom. Why? Because there would be another season of war the next year. They come back and lick their wounds and heal up and recover and become strong again. And guys, for Christ to be your rock, it means this. Is that every morning, there has to be a time in your life every day, guys. And I cannot say it enough. I'm at the age of older than you. Um, and I know this for a fact. There's days where if I don't spend time in God's Word, I'm not the same person I need to be at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. If you don't spend time in God's word, guys, you're not catching what God maybe wanted to teach you or maybe wanted to say to you or give promises to you that at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when that first coach yells at you for not doing something a particular way, that your day's not ruined. Because your hope is not in a coach or a teacher or a grade or a mark on a board, but it's your hope is in Christ. Because guys, it can be really easy, especially in these first couple weeks. Some of you seniors are already overwhelmed because you're like, I've got AP class this, AP class this. I even have office A AP, okay? Like when I go to the restroom, it's AP, okay? Everything in my life is AP, and it's wearing me out. I have more homework than most homes have work, okay? And some of y'all are so worn out at the end of the day that you can't even think straight. You're like, I have to be up until 2 o'clock doing homework. How can I get up 15 minutes earlier? How can you not get 15 minutes earlier? I mean, if you're going to, on a trip to San Antonio, why would you wait until you get to San Antonio to get gas? You get up every morning and spend time in God's Word. Read it verse by verse by verse. I've been reading John uh, since January. You know where I'm at? John 4.30. Tomorrow morning, John 4.30. Like, gee, Craig, your son probably reads better than that. He probably does, but I've been chewing on everything day by day, verse by verse. Word by word. And there are days where I get more out of it. There's days where I don't get a lot out of it. But every day I'm getting something out of it. But he strengthens you. The fourth thing is this. Is it the fortress being your rock? The rock being your fortress? That's your staging point. Because, listen, and this is the thing that I'm very passionate about is that you don't just come here and sit and stew in your pew, but that you go and do. Because the things we talk about in here are not for in here. It's for your classes. It's for your teachers. It's for your coaches. It's for your classmates. It's for your teammates. It's for your mom. It's for your dad. That there are 7 billion people on the planet. And more than two-thirds of them do not know Christ as their Lord and Savior. In your generation, guys, listen, in your generation of students, about 10%, maybe less than that, know Christ as their Lord and Savior and believe the Bible to be true. So it's probably about five students in this room that would qualify for that. So you go back into your school and you start to think about the percentage. And 10%. You look around in your class of 25 people, that's about 
two really tall kids and probably the shortest kid in class. Look at the rest of the kids that don't. You get 100 teachers on your campus. Maybe 10 of them. Now listen, it's not judging them. You know what it is? It's begging and pleading on God's behalf. First Corinthians chapter 5. It's begging and pleading on God's behalf that they would have the kind of relationship with Christ that you do. It's not telling them, oh God, you're going to hell. That's between them and God. But as you say, I enjoy God as my rock and my fortress this much that I need to know that you know He can mean that much to you as well. And this is a staging point. Every time you get an opportunity to be with Christ, it's an opportunity for you to stage that one day as you're saying, this day, I'm taking this day for Christ. And I'm walking out of here and I'm doing something for Christ today. I'm going to make an impact. I'm going to tell somebody. I'm going to pray with somebody. I'm going to brighten somebody's day. I'm going to be kind to somebody. I'm going to be encouraging to somebody. I'm going to tell people the truth about God. Guys, you cannot go wrong in those things. And this is why the day coming back to God as his fortress, and I'm going to give three things in the way back. One is that he kept saying it was for your name's sake. Your name's sake. You know, Friday night, it's really easy because you want your name called on Friday night or middle school, it's whatever night that they choose to place your football game. But you just want to hear your name. But you just want your name pronounced correctly. You don't even care if it's pronounced. You just want it. Good joke. Did I get it? I tried. First name's Bo. That, that counts. But guys, you hear what I'm saying? Is that a lot of times we want to hear our name called, we want to we want to get accolades, we want you know people to notice us, we want people to say, hey, I like your haircut, and you're like, great, I didn't even come this morning, but cool, you know, nice makeup. No, that's a sunburn, you know. You want to get noticed. You want people to notice you all the time. You want to get the end zone and go right there. You want to smack that volleyball right in some girl's face until she has a migraine for three days. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's athletics. I'm competitive that way. But you see what I'm saying? There's certain days where you want it to be all about you, but guys, Christ died so that it wasn't about us, it's about Him. And guys, I want to continue to reiterate this. This youth group is not about me and it's not about these adults, it's about Jesus. It's not about cool walls, which, by the way, they are really pretty cool walls. It's not about the walls. It's not about the chairs. It's not about the games. It's not even about the worship or who's leading worship. It's not who we worship. And so David keeps coming back. He says, for his name's sake, for his name's sake, for his name's sake. Why? Because David, in his mind, everything was about God. Why? Because God had called him to be king. Nobody else could have called David to be king. Nobody else could have invited you to salvation. And nobody else could have invited you to heaven. But God called you and he invited you. And then on top of that, for those of you who have been believers for a while, you know that God's invited you to be a part of his work on this planet. So that when you go out, it's not about you. It's about what God can do in and through you. Because he called you. And he invited you. And more than that, he enables you. He enables you. It still boggles my mind how... Um, I think it was, yeah, it was last summer in New Orleans. Um, but, uh, Bryn, uh, who is pretty quiet. If you've not met Bryn, she's pretty quiet. She's pretty shy. She says sorry quite a bit. So we prayed with Bryn, and then we sent her into an area of New Orleans with a buddy. And then they found another uh, statue figure. And then she went up to statue figure and had an hour-long conversation with said statue figure. You see Brent on a Sunday morning, you know that doesn't happen very often. But she comes in, she has her Bible, she squeezes up real tight, and she sits right down on one of these couches about 9.30, and she tries not to get noticed. But one Wednesday afternoon in New Orleans last year, she was all about getting God noticed, because she walks up to this silver man and says, hey, you need Jesus. And they talk for about an hour. You think Brian can do that on her own? Not really. 
It's by God that does that. God's the one that changed Aaron from who he was as a ninth grade kid that we sat in my truck all the way to Lake, uh, to Lake Levon a few years ago. And God began to change his life. And I watched him change because the more he trusted God, the more God shaped him into the man that Aaron Stamper is now. God enables that to happen. The last thing is this. Is that God continued to provide for David. And in every situation that God had called David into, he enabled him and he provided for him. And so guys, when you walk into your school, and you're freaked out because there's so many people there. You're like, oh my God, there's seniors there. You're a freshman. Guys, those, those seniors need Christ just as much as you did when you were in seventh grade. God will give you the words that you need to walk into those situations. God will give you the peace you need to handle some of those things. God will give you the wisdom to be able to know when to walk away or when to walk in. And so God really is that rock and that fortress. But it only happens, listen, it only happens once you begin to go back to what David said for you all. What is your declaration about who Jesus is? Who do you say he is? That is the absolutely most important thing about you is what you believe about Jesus. Because that will determine for me and for everybody else around you who you believe in and who you give your life to is what you believe about Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace. And Father, I just ask that you would speak to these students and their smart groups. Father, that you are the rock in the fortress that they can cling to and they can hold on to. And Father, we ask that you do something amazing in their small groups. And Father, that you would leave an impression on their lives like you left an impression on Brynn and on Aaron and many of these adults. Today. Father, we love you and we thank you. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. All right, guys, just splitting the small groups, about five to six in each group. Uh, questions are on that back table. Enjoy, and we'll see you guys Sunday morning for Sunday school at 9 o'clock.
I wouldn't get angry, but I would go and love her. Yeah. I'd like say, I'm paying for that space. You know, things are not as supposed to. And if not, then you bring me this to school office and you get angry. Oh, 
Thank you. 